talk to us about these expat communities. Who's moving in and what are you noticing in terms of who's moving out? Thank you very much, uh, Vani, and glad to be back on, uh, on Bloomberg. Well, it starts at the macro level in the UAE. I mean, this is a place that for many years we've been talking about with all of the reform that's there is uh, one of the most attractive places in the world to live, work and play. And we can see that with businesses moving to the UAE, people moving their family offices, large corporates and institutions, tourism up. Uh, and it's our job to capitalize, really understand that demand. Um, and we have some amazing destinations, uh, whether it's on Yas Island with all the theme parks and entertainment venues, whether it's on Sadiat with you know world-class second to none um, uh, cultural sites from the Louvre to the Guggenheim, the National History Museum and so on. And we've now been building, upping the game, building some world-class communities, serving all segments from the ultra luxury with things like the noble residences where uh, we announced a you know $40 million penthouse, the highest rate in, in Abu Dhabi, down to affordable communities, uh, single multifamily homes. And what we've really seen, the big re-rating moment, has been the international buyers. Uh, so we moved from 2% five years ago of non-resident international buyers to 40% in, in Q1. Um, so Abu Dhabi and the UAE is on the map. Uh, these are real buyers who are coming and moving their families to come and live here or find this as one of the most lucrative investments that they can make at a perfect time in, in the cycle. Mm. Well, you already have serious plans for Abu Dhabi. You're ramping up work on that beachfront community and Al Fahid Island, 7,000 properties. But you have to look out several years ahead, right? Where across the UAE are you seeing growth three to four to five years from now? So look, I mean, what we're seeing today is that we believe that this growth is very sustainable. And that's why we've been out replenishing our, our land bank um, with the acquisition of uh, Fahid Island that we're going to be launching later this year. And that's a 25 billion dirham um, development. Uh, we announced a big partnership in Dubai uh, and our first launch Haven was a sellout. Our second uh, product is going to go out uh, to launch uh, next month in, uh, in May and a third one later on this year. We launched our franchise in Ras Al Khaimah. Um, that city as well, with all of the announcements over there on the entertainment and gaming side, has really been, um, at, you know, what the, you know, a very, very attractive uh, market. And we went out there with some unique beachfront uh, developments. But Al Dar is also a very different company today as we moved, expanded internationally. The Egypt franchise, which we've been getting a lot of questions about in the past, all of a sudden Egypt is now back, uh, you know, in in the limelight post some major announcements. But we were there before. We sustained through that period. Um, uh, our business remains more valuable than it was uh, when we acquired in, uh, in 2021. And we're now looking to replicate that in London with the purchase of London Square um, in, in December. And we've been on a bit of a shopping spree acquiring four central London sites uh, that we're looking to launch later this year and in, uh, in 2025. So it's quite a balanced uh, mix across single multifamily homes and across you know, the luxury all the way down to, to the affordable segment, Vani. Are you planning more expansion in Egypt? And once you have these four sites in London, more expansion in London? So um, in Egypt, we're focusing a lot on the North Coast. That's uh, a real, uh, real hotspot. Um, in London, we have our property development company through London Square. And we announced through partnership, two partnerships, one with Carlisle in the logistics space, um, which is a big focus for us both in the UK and in the UAE, where we announced a, a billion dirham uh, program. We also launched a credit fund with, uh, with Aries that's performing very well. But more importantly, back home, um, 2024 is going to be a big year in M&A on our investment business. So we focused a lot on the development side, but on the investment side, we're going to be ramping up our retail office. We have a big revamp of our hospitality portfolio. So what made us unique uh, five years ago is we were a very diversified and well-balanced business. And as our development business really mm. booms up, we need to make sure that we continue to invest in all of these other asset classes. Tell I'll talk to us about pricing, because certainly locally, at least around the UAE, we saw an uptick, although Abu Dhabi had been lagging, say, Dubai for some time, but 6% increase, according to Cushman Wakefield. Where do you see prices headed near term in the Emirates and beyond? So mid single digits is a very healthy return given all of the investment that's happening. So when you look at a six and a half billion dollar investment program that's happening in Saudi Arabia, if you look at the multi billion dollar investment that's happening with the theme parks on uh, on Yas, if you look at the announcements in Dubai with the new airport that's going to be the largest um, in the world, when you have 
mid single digit returns, uh, increases in property prices. We think that's very healthy. It's sustainable. It's going to continue. As, as with all property cycles, every few years, there could be a correction. So that may come in, in two or three years. But Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and the wider UAE for prime or affordable products remain you know, benchmarked globally. And these are global cities, extremely attractive and extremely lucrative. So that's what people are seeing. You should compare prices in Abu Dhabi on the beautiful beaches of Sadiat to Miami or London mm. or Sydney or Paris. And, you know, the quality of life that you can get, the safety and security, is second to none. It sounds like you're planning, you know, as everybody should be, you know, for tail risk scenarios and potentially a correction, as you said, in two or three years. What would catalyze that, Talal? There's, there, there's lots of things that, uh, that happen. And, you know, with, with demand and supply, you always need to uh, try and match them. Four or five years ago, people stopped investing in, in office space. But the government came with massive catalyst programs and invested in the, uh, the Abu Dhabi global markets that we acquired a few years ago. At the time, it was at 76% occupancy. Um, it's today at 99%. All of a sudden, the office market is back in demand. Now, what happens is many people um, uh, start to go and invest in this space. And sometimes... You know, you do end up with oversupply in some pockets or some sub-segments. Therefore, you, you kind of go and get a correction. So what's very important is that you're very prudent. You have a long-term business plan. You are trying to grow in the right risk-adjusted way. And you are ready for these corrections or potential shocks uh, in the system that do exist, whether it's COVID or whether it's geopolitics or whether it's high interest rates. But as sustainable businesses, you need to be able to weather the storm and continue to grow sustainably. And that's what we have been uh, doing and how we benchmark our total shareholder uh, returns for the last decade. Mm. Talal, just briefly, the impact of the recent floods, they were pretty unmanageable for you know, most of the population at a certain point in time this month. So once in 75 years, it really uh, stress tested the infrastructure, identified areas that needed um, uh, to, to come back. Some areas took longer, but 80 to 90% of businesses and free flow was back within 24 to 48 hours. So I commend everyone that went out on site and had the patience um, uh, to go out there. You see uh, airports around the world uh, that have disruptions every month due to strikes or due to other things. Um, so for us to have that kind of a shock once in 75 years, is a testament to you know the high quality that we have, but do we need to invest uh, in some areas and be uh, ready uh, as we uh, you know uh, are impacted from uh, from climate change? Yes, uh, we do, and you know there's a big program, and as we can see across Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and all the Northern Emirates, that investment is already uh, underway, and infrastructure will continue to be king.